Why well, hello there, welcome back to my channel. It's great to have you back here once again. And if it's your first time, welcome. Welcome anyway, it's good to have you. Hope you're doing well wherever you may be. Of course, if you like what you hear, what you see, make sure you smash that like button, click subscribe, and of course, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, feelings, and suggestions on any other topics I need to cover coming up. Yeah, 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 I know. The title's a bit clickbaity, but it is what it is, isn't it? It's the first of the month, the rent is due, and daddy's gotta get paid, so go and complain to your mummy i'm not going to hear none of your complaints down below if you complain about the clickbait nature of the title i'm going to give your comment a down vote yeah, i'm going to give it a little thumbs down and attack it and let you know that i'm not a fan of what you have to say oh yeah so i was listening to the recent episode of the joe rogan podcast featuring quentin tarantino the legendary director and i have to say it might be one of my most favorite joe rogan episodes of the kind of recent years ever since the move to spotify i found myself listening to rogan less and less even though i'm a hardcore fan it's just you know the habits that were kind of ingrained with having to check or listen to the podcast via youtube and apple Podcasts. of now having to be kind of unlearned i'm gonna to have to switch to listening to it or watching it via spotify and as most of you are aware the spotify ux ui whatever it may be is absolutely terrible sometimes you'll play an episode it'll keep pausing from minute to minute or sometimes you'll download it and you won't download it properly and then when you do download it you get all these unnecessary ads even though you're paying for spotify Spotify, it's just a complete mess. But this episode of Kitten Tarantino made all of that pausing and stuttering and buffering well, well worth it. Something that's kind of grinded my gears in the background and something that probably shouldn't really affect me or get me so worked up because it's really none of my business. But you know, it's the internet, it's YouTube. The whole reason why I'm here is basically to pretend like I give a shit about what other people have going on in their lives because my life, you know, for the most part is fairly boring. I don't know, maybe it's just me and I'm reading way too much into it. But as a big Joe Rogan fan, if there's one thing that you notice over the years that he kind of goes on and on about is counterculture and it just seems weird to me that two of his kind of you know closest friends or people that he's spoken about very highly on these podcasts as you know, Chris Alia, you know before the whole allegations came out a lot of people would say they weren't necessarily fans of his comedy but they always kind of gave him the props of being an absolute killer on stage and that was something that you kind of heard reiterated a lot of times on Joe Rogan's podcast even had Chris Alia on his show a few times and then with Brian Callen he always kind of made it seem as if Brian Callen and him were were best friends there's pictures of them two together in the back of a car from like you know more than 30 or so years ago they came up together i think around the same sort of time they maybe moved to hollywood in the same sort of time who knows but you did get the feeling that those guys were actually real friends outside of the whole entertainment hollywood thing and just given joe rogan's platform and his sort of kind of give a fuck attitude you would just expect that he would be a little bit more forthright in his defense of his colleagues especially if he generally thinks that they're innocent but it feels like when it comes to the whole the leer and calendar thing he just refuses to get involved and the only reason why i'm talking about this now is that funnily enough when Quentin tarantino sat down with joe rogan it was actually rogan himself who brought up the issues surrounding um quinta tarantino's very close working and personal friendship with harvey weinstein and everything that happened to him subsequently within the last what two or three years so you would imagine if somebody in that position of a Quentin tarantino could be so i don't know mature could be so reasonable could have such a kind of refreshing take on what it is and how difficult it must be to be the friend of somebody who gets cancelled in such a way who gets accused of such a heinous crime who's kind of hurt so many different people but you only know of them as a good person because that's the one thing you kind of get out from this little clip i'm gonna play is that Quentin tarantino knew of harvey as being one guy but obviously behind the scenes and with you know mostly females that he was trying to pursue he was a completely different person and what i really like about it as well in the clip is that he reiterates under no circumstances anybody close to harvey weinstein not know that he was a bit of a creep but they didn't know the extent of where far it went they maybe thought he was kind of you know the guy that would maybe put forth you know unwanted advances but you know considering it's the entertainment industry and people are just sleazy dirtbags by the large i'm assuming he just thought it was nothing out of the ordinary if Quentin tarantino can say this about harvey weinstein i don't necessarily see how it's so difficult for rogan to comment just a little bit on what happened with kellen and what happened with Delia. even if he just does think both of these guys are guilty because he knows them personally it would probably do them the world of good maybe as a, in terms of their career and in terms of their ability to put food on the table for their family to have somebody in their corner like a rogan basically saying hey i'm not really condoning what they're alleged to be done but i would prefer it if my friends were had the possibility to be you know deemed innocent until proven guilty and you know be allowed to go through all the necessary steps in order to clear their name and if they're not able to clear their name and what they've been accused of is obviously legit and real buried them under the prison you would imagine you would hope that he would do something like that 
right but you know for whatever reason rogan doesn't want to do it completely understandable like i said the spotify thing bloody blah 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 but let me play the clip and then you can judge for yourself how weird is it for you to have had a relationship with that guy for all these years making all these films and now see what he's become it's um it's sad it's sad he it was like you know he wasn't like he wasn't just this guy who financed my movies he was you know kind of like a father figure i mean he was kind of a fucked up father figure but that's most people's fucking father yeah. <laughs> you know he was a, a fucked up father figure but he was like you know he was involved in you know uh my professional life for like a long long time so it's like it's you know i think it's sad oh it's definitely sad it's just it's surreal though too right yeah. because we've never mm-hmm. seen other than bill cosby we've never seen like a fall like this before mm-hmm. it's so strange yeah well you know one of the things is funny like i said an interview with the with the with the two women that cracked the case on the New York Times. I, I did a talk with them during that time. I don't really talk about it that much afterwards because we're like, well, I did it with them and that's enough. But um, one of the things I ended up like saying is, well, I wish I had done more um, during the time. And a lot of people like read a lot of what that could possibly mean. Right. Well, actually what it means is I wish I had talked to the guy. <laughs> I wish I had sat him down and had the uncomfortable conversation. I didn't know about any rapes or anything like that. I just, you know, but I, I knew he was, you know, I, like I chalked it up to the boss chasing the secretary around the desk you know, as if that's okay. But I mean, that's how I, right. that's how I kind of looked at it. You know, he was, you know, making unwanted advances. That's how I looked at it. But uh, I wish I talked to him. I wish I had sat him down and go, Harvey, you, you can't do this. You're going to fuck up everything. Do you think that no one talked to him and maybe that was how he got so yeah. completely out of control? Yeah, maybe his brother Bob. Maybe, but I, you know, uh, um, uh, I, no, I don't think anybody talked to him about it. And the thing about it is everybody who was in his orbit knew about it. There's nobody who said they didn't know that didn't know. Mm. If you're in his orbit... And that includes all the big actors who he palled around with. Like they all knew. They all knew. They didn't know any. Probably they didn't know anything about rapes, but they had heard. Yeah. They had heard things. They had heard. They had heard about him just, you know, uh, uh, you know, putting the bite on somebody in a limo or something. The the story of the rich, powerful producer and the actress who wants to be in films is mm-hmm. a story that's as old as film itself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those stories that goes on. I mean, it's it was almost like, I mean, I'm, I don't really have a history in film, but mm-hmm. from what it's been explained to me, that's always what it's been like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I they gave me a tour of Shaw Brothers Studios, and I'm taking a tour of Shaw Brothers Studios, and they take me into the screening room, and then like, okay, well, okay, see that chair in the back there, that was reserved for the for the owner of the studio, Run Run Shaw. That's where he sat, and in the back room is a little bed. <laughs> And that's reserved for where Run Run Shaw took the starlets. Really? Yeah. And it was all. <laughs> wow. Interesting perspective, isn't it? And that maybe is at the heart of most of these issues that happen to these big people, especially, you know, people that are maybe larger than life and have this really, you know, massive, overbearing influence on a particular part of entertainment or culture. Sometimes you just get so big, you just get so powerful that people are just unable to have real conversations with you. And I guess mainly, maybe maybe specifically as dudes, this is where we kind of maybe fail and we probably have to hold ourselves accountable more so. Because I think even outside of, you know, being a big celebrity and just being a regular guy on the street, more often than not, in your group of friends, if there's a guy that can get a little bit handsy when you're on your night out or can get a little bit weird and creepy around girls in general, there usually is a tendency to just kind of stay away from that person and slowly but surely ice them out of your friendship group as opposed to maybe pulling them aside and saying hey we like you as a friend and we think the good times far outweigh the bad but you need to chill out when it comes to doing x y and z we rarely have we rarely really have those kind of hard-hitting blunt conversations it's maybe one of my complaints when it comes to like friendships right you really really break up with a friend i've only had maybe a couple of instances in my life maybe when i was really young and actually quite recently where somebody said hey i don't want to be a friend anymore do you know what I mean? I've moved on. I've got other things I want to do, and you're not, you don't really fit that kind of um, 
you don't fit where I'm trying to go and what I want to do in my life and I don't want to continue this relationship anymore because you know it's basically done but we don't really have that a lot in life and no one really kind of breaks up with you as a friend they kind of just slowly but surely you know they just tag along because they just happen to know you for a certain amount of time and it's hard to let them go or it's hard for them to kind of stay out of your life or you just kind of slowly but surely ignore them but it would be nice if guys could be a little bit more honest with their friends and hold them accountable if they are being creeps around women because that's just the only way stuff like this stops but then i'm also understandable as well that you know if you're somebody like a harvey weinstein like who can really talk to you who can really get time enough to sit in front of you and have that kind of frank conversation and usually you'd imagine somebody that's been you know able to get away with so many heinous crimes like this is probably the master of manipulation they can probably quite quickly get out of that awkward conversation make some excuses let you know that they're going to change and then go back to doing what they're going to do and then after that happens what you know what do you do do you go back and talk to them for a second time a third time you probably don't you probably leave it alone but then the other thing that you mentioned that's also interesting is the fact that everybody knew or right, to some extent but I, might, I did remember reading an article that the actually sickening part of Harvey Weinstein was the fact that he always came good to, he always kind of delivered on his promises so if you were somebody that was willing and kind of um, up for partaking in some of his more you know salacious and downright disgusting stuff that he wanted to do with a female actress outside of actually just you know uh, auditioning and performing in front of the camera he would come through on the promise whether it was kind of putting you uh, in consideration for a role whether it was allowing you to sit in an the writer's room whatever it may be that you would come to to some sort of weird um tacit illicit agreement to he would always deliver so maybe that was part of the issue too that he manipulated the situation in a way where because he did right by so many people they were willing to kind of turn a blind eye to all the really dark stuff that he was doing and the lives that he was destroying really really grim but again everybody knew and it's funny that for the most part the media and the press would focus on a guy like Harvey, on a guy like Quentin Tarantino and kind of you know put him up against the wall and say how did you didn't say nothing why couldn't you do this why couldn't you stop that and try and make him feel guilty about whatever his friend was doing behind closed doors but if you think about it I haven't heard the same amount of pressure or the same amount of venom or the same amount of energy being placed towards that lady I forgot her name but she I think she was Harvey Weinstein's assistant or something along that kind of line and she's now a director I don't know again don't ask me how that correlation happens but I guess it's Hollywood you can kind of jump from anything as long as you've got the right contacts and the right sort of amount of you know networking skills and whatnot but there was this lady who I'm assuming if I'm not mistaken was the assistant or something I think she might have been from New Zealand Australia again don't quote me on this but she was somebody that was basically Harvey Weinstein's right hand woman and somehow she's been able to kind of get away from the scrutiny for this whole situation kind of scot free and basically rebrand herself as a director with no real mention of her of her ties or not lies you know uh, frauds and slip there of her ties with Harvey Weinstein which is kind of shocking considering especially what has actually occurred behind the scenes behind closed doors you know in these kind of weird places that Harvey was kind of you know doing most of his damage it's just really really bizarre again like I said I can't hold Rogan maybe to the fire too much with this because you know like I mentioned earlier if you if Spotify hand you a hundred million dollar check I'm sure most people would do far worse things to their friends or you know would probably stay quiet about far more things than the things that Rogan has stayed quiet about in order to make sure that check it clears because hundred you know a hundred million click check clearing in your account even if you are rogan is a hell of a lot of money so maybe that's the reason why but maybe i got it all wrong maybe i don't know what i'm talking about and i'm reading reading into it too much and it really isn't that big of an issue i'd love to know what you think in the comments down below but until next time i'll see you again very very soon peace